What's going on guys? It's Gatlin here from Carphonics. I hope you guys are welcoming me back from Florida. That was uh, quite the experience for me. Uh, I'll dabble in that a little bit later in some other video, but for now, just welcome me back. It was kind of a nightmare getting back from uh, Florida there. Uh, a lot of the airports were kind of jammed up with people wanting to get the heck out of there. So uh, uh, to all my Florida friends, I hope you guys remain safe and uh, everything is okay out in your direction. Today we're working on this Jeep here and uh, we're going to show you guys how to do a parasitic draw test. This customer came in and uh, had a radio installed by a dealership and uh, by radio I mean a Chinese piece of crap into the dash and I'll show you that here in a second. And uh, this is what we're looking at here guys, it's a uh, you know Chinese aftermarket deck uh, that uh, isn't designed to fit into the dash. so. Generally, you have to notch out the sides of the dash hole in order for it to fit in there, which is just horrific. Uh, I can't believe a dealership would actually do that to someone's vehicle in the first place, but uh, it is what it is. So this customer had this radio installed into this car, and let me squeeze my, myself out of this thing. And uh, basically, he's complaining of the vehicles dying every time uh, he gets out in the morning to go and start the thing. And uh, I guess he took it to the dealership and the dealership has determined that there's an open CAN bus SIG circuit going on behind either the radio or an open CAN bus circuit somewhere in the vehicle that's kind of keeping something on and draining the battery overnight. So one of the first things we're going to do is a battery test to make sure that the battery is okay and then we'll carry on with our parasitic draw test. So the very first thing we're going to do here is uh, remove our positive and negative battery terminals. And there's our negative there, and our positive should remove fairly easily. We'll just put those off to the side, and we'll grab our battery tester now. One of these things that every car audio shop should have, I keep mine in the box because it's not very frequent that we have to use it, but uh, it just kind of draws out and, you know, eliminates problems in the vehicle but basically you know a customer may come in and complain and say hey you know what my battery is dying on my vehicle because of what you've done and it's just part of the risk that we take as aftermarket installers you know it's easiest just to go ahead and blame the car audio guy it is what it is a lot of dealerships will do the same thing say oh well you know this is happening to your car because of the remote starter this is happening because of the, you know the aftermarket audio system in your car uh, it's an easy you know they can charge 110 bucks for their shop labor rates and then blame the problem on somebody else so we're going to go ahead and install our battery tester inside the vehicle here and I'll try to keep myself out of the way. Positive goes on the positive and negative goes on the negative. So off the hop here, um, we're already noticing that the vehicle's battery level is kind of between the good and the low. And we're going to go ahead now and do a draw test, which is just this little switch right down here. And you'll instantaneously notice it goes right down to the replace sector on the battery. Um, I think we could maybe try to charge the battery a little bit more, but uh, in this case, I believe that the battery is probably pooched. So uh, we will go ahead, charge up the battery, or put a charger on it while we're doing our parasitic draw test. And uh, we won't put a battery charger while we're doing the parasitic draw test, but we'll charge up the battery and then do our parasitic draw test. All right, so we got our battery charger hooked up here give her a 30 minute timer and put her on 12 volts high and uh, let that sucker charge up for a good half an hour and uh, we will do a battery test on it afterwards let it settle for a minute or two and uh, we'll go from there in the meantime uh, I got this big skidded order I'm not sure if you guys remember seeing that on a few videos from before but uh, I need to start building some boxes and putting some subs in the boxes and getting some packages ready and getting this area cleared the F out. Alrighty, so we got the battery charger on there, it's done. I let it settle for about uh, 10 minutes before I use the battery tester and uh, we're back in the good. Alright, so we can hook up our battery. Uh, the first step here is we're going to hook up our negative and leave our positive disconnected. Alrighty, so we've tested the battery here and the battery seems to be okay. The next step is to hook up your 
uh, meter here. Set it on DC amps, 20 amps for 12 volt and below, 20 amp below. And uh, we're gonna go ahead now and put our black terminal on the positive side and our positive terminal on the positive lead. And uh, this is what we're reading here so far, guys, which is a tenth of an amp, basically, which isn't really a whole lot of amperage draw. Uh, I've disconnected the radio and reconnected it and done the whole process again, and we're not really running into any issues here uh, for amperage. And uh, I think what we're gonna end up doing here is uh, just maybe pulling fuses one by one and uh, seeing if there's any differentiating uh, voltage. But uh, in the initial stage here, uh, the issue was that the battery was kind of pooched. And I'm kind of thinking what happened was is that the guy would have the vehicle boosted, take it for a short drive, and then, you know, the battery wouldn't uh, be charged fully enough for it to start back up in the morning. Uh, it is the original battery to the Jeep. It's uh, about uh, six, seven years old at this point. This is a 2012 Jeep. So um, the battery wasn't looking that good. I did charge it. It's looking okay now. Um, but what would happen generally in a parasitic draw test is you would actually remove fuses one by one and then determine the circuit after the voltage or the amperage would drop on the diagram here and then you'd be able to determine what circuit it is that's actually drawing power away from the battery and in this case uh, nothing is really drawing anything away the vehicle's locked the CAN bus system has been shut down so I'm not really seeing any type of draw pattern here. So the next step for us here, aside from pulling individual fuses, is to put this back to factory here, put the uh, positive lead back onto the positive of the battery, and uh, actually test the voltage that the alternator is putting out on the battery. So we've got our battery reconnected here. Sorry about the buzzing there. Um, but at, uh, you know, Everything's off, CAN bus shut down, we're reading 12.6 volts, which is good. And we're gonna go ahead now and use the keys and start it up. All right, so with the vehicle running, we're reading at 14.4, 14.3, and that's exactly where we wanna be, guys. So I think in this case, uh, the vehicle and the customer, uh, he may have had a uh, kind of a short in his battery or a dead cell in the battery and uh, maybe didn't realize it and got a boost, started the vehicle up, didn't let it charge long enough and then the next day he'd go to start the vehicle and it would kind of be dead. So I think the solution in this case is to put our battery charger on the battery, let it charge up for a good few hours, uh, get a proper charge on there. Note to anybody, if you ever have a dead battery in your vehicle, never rely on the alternator itself to charge the battery unless you're really planning on going for a very, very, very long drive. And by long drive, I mean over a couple of hours of driving to let the battery bank itself back up to its normal charging rate. Um, if you don't have a battery charger, you may want to invest in one. They're about 25 bucks from either Canadian Tire, Pep Boys, wherever you guys are. You can get one pretty easily and pretty cheap, uh, but don't ever rely on just the alternator itself to charge the battery from dead. First off, it's not good for the alternator. It's actually pretty bad for the diodes in the back of the alternator to charge a dead battery. It causes a lot of resistance and heat and can prolong or not prolong, it can actually do the opposite. It can actually destroy your alternator a lot faster than it typically would in uh, any other case. The, the operation and the um, design of a factory alternator is to keep the charge on the battery up to par. It's not to charge a battery from dead. So hopefully you guys learned how to do a parasitic draw test on today's video. I appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, doing all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. And remember, crimping ain't easy. Have a great day. So just take your battery charger, stick it on 12 volts, and uh, I got it set here for about uh, an hour and 20, 120 minutes there in continuous charge. Keep an eye on our charging port here and uh, give it the best fighting chance you can, guys. Peace.